I'm very excited to have our guests on the show today, Th and thank you, Kathy, for, for having us. But we're now invoking a, a kind of a green segment on Celebrity U Radio. And with that being said, I wanted to introduce Andrea Bithel and Heather Rolandi. Andrea Bithel, I'm going to uh, start with her and introduce her. She is the, known as the Oak Cliff Organics Garden Lady. And Heather Rolandi, she is the Texas Worm Wrangler uh, inventor or organizer of the, the worm wine. So uh, kind of get into some of that. But just kind of some basic questions for you gals. Um, what, what is organics and why is it so popular here lately? Organics is a term that was defined more than 50 years ago. Basically, it is growing food or even landscape without the use of man-made fertilizers, without pesticides, and without any herbicides around. Also, a part of organics is adding minerals and vitamins and humus back into the ground to feed the humus. plants. It's what, what's humus? It's ancient poop. Ancient poop. <laughs> All right, or not nice. so ancient if it's worm poop. If it's wor and that's kind of your thing. So, And I think everybody's very uh, kind of interested to hear about your worm wine. Talk to us about that. Okay. Well, I started uh, composting with worms. And, of course, worms' end product is worm compost or worm poop. And so I started using that with rainwater and molasses which boosts the microbial activity in that worm uh, compost. And that is very beneficial for your plants and helps you prevent fungal disease. And the worms, as they digest, release plant hormones and the plant nutrients. And all that is a great organic health benefit to your plants. So are the worms eating, eating the food compost? Is yes. That, is that, and so they're digesting it, breaking that down, and then uh, letting that go? And, and that's your fertilizer for your... Absolutely. Your my plants. my family eats our uh, fruit and vegetable scraps go to our worms. Our worms eat and their byproduct goes to the plants and it's just a full cycle. Very cool. And so Andrea, I wanted to talk to uh, you a little bit about what you've done over at uh, Smoke Restaurant over at uh, Belmont Hotel. It's one of it's kind of a leading edge things that's happening in the Dallas area where you actually have a live garden behind the restaurant. So a, a live organic garden. We can honestly boast we are the first organic restaurant garden, not only in Oak Cliff, but in the Dallas area. Very cool. And what we have up there is a thousand square feet of plantable space devoted to organic gardening. We also have peach trees and blackberry bushes and I'm hoping to get more as the season goes on. It's, I'm glad you mentioned that. So in your experience, because when we've done uh, past segments with Kathy, we always talk about what's not hot. So what's not great to grow? What are the things that are, that are not hot to grow in this Texas heat that are not when you, people go to the store and they say, here's 150 seeds and I'm just going to go start these seeds. What do you, what do you think the uh, highest failure rate is on some plants that people would normally think you could grow, but you can't? Well, you're not going to want to try to do tomatoes in this heat or, or even start them or plant a transplant right now because it's too late. Mm -hmm. um, okra is doing fabulously right now. It, it loves the heat. So is the cantaloupe. It's a good um, mid-season crop to start out with. What about what are um, throughout the year, what are some popular things to grow in, in Texas? Tomatoes and peppers. Mainly, that's, that's a big pull. Um, lettuces and leafy greens come at a premium these days. Leafy greens. What's, what's the season on your leafy greens? Leafy greens, you can start those um, twice a year. We have a, a fabulous two-season planting time in Texas. You can start those as early as February, March, and you can do them again in October. So when you harvest those greens, I mean, what kind of greens are they? Um, I'm talking lettuces, kale, collards, mustard greens, and Swiss chard, kohlrabi. So you, you cut them down, and then they what's the uh, replication or the reproduction time on that? Um, it, Is it, it a one-shot deal? Not well. If you mow down the plant, yes, it becomes a one-shot <laughs> deal. Um, if you take, say, from the outer edges of the plant, all of those will keep reproducing throughout the season until they freeze. So making sure that you're kind of harvesting from the outer mm -hmm. outer edges, outer is, edges is important. Yes. So one of the reasons I wanted to have these gals on the show was 
Um, and what I do with the sustainable living consultation with the, the home inspection business is turning my clients on to how to live a more sustainable life. And I approached you, you gals about you were coming together and had this concept and you actually set up organic gardens in people's backyard. And mm-hmm. so that, that to me is just a brilliant revelation on, on people that they want to do the right thing and they want to live organic and they want to do it. Um, but they're not quite sure how to do it and so in step the dallas grow gals and here you are and you actually offer up a a four by four a four by six or a four by eight plot and you have i guess a menu of options that uh we'll do custom too okay so then you go up and tell me about it all right well basically you know i've been gardening a long time and recently with the explosion of organics and people wanting to do organic gardening I've had some of my friends start gardens in their own backyard, but then they'd have failure. (laughs) Uh, You know, they wouldn't plant the right things at the right time. Uh, They didn't really know how to take care of it. So it's a source of frustration for them. Absolutely. Um, So we have a concept where we can do it affordably, probably more affordably than the homeowner could do themselves because we have access to bulk organic compost uh-huh. and we'll put in worm the, wine and worm wine and we'll put in <laughs> the, the correct organic um, components and then help support and educate and have um, email and phone call and Facebook and that's that's one thing that, that you, when we were talking before you said that uh, you know look we will go and say this is we'll give you phone support or live support or we'll help you maintain it at a certain monthly charge and i think that's brilliant because there's some people that just don't want to deal with it they want to walk out in the backyard and pick their vegetables and go i think i think we have a question back here is it do we it's it's tweeting in somebody's tweeting in thank you tweeters (laughs) um but yes, we do offer up a maintenance contract, which would include a weekly weeding, foliar feeding, um, plant check, bug check, and sprucing up of the general area. With the bug check, so that's kind of becoming more popular. Where can you go to your local garden center and actually buy bugs to eat other bugs to maintain your pests? Uh, I know that's in biodynamic farming. Is that part of your concepts? I, I actually believe in attracting those, those beneficial insects. Mm-hmm. A lot of times when you buy those beneficial insects, you let them out of their bag, and their instinct is to just go fly away. Um, but I, Andrea and I know how to create the habitat that will attract those beneficial insects. And wh- when you say beneficial insects, what, we're not talking like your big water bug. We're, we're, <laughs> you know, what are we talking about? No, there are bugs called assassin bugs that eat some of the nasty critters that prey on your vegetable plants and there are ladybugs which eat aphids Uh, just having a habitat that supports lizards and toads which are huge um, eaters of all of those bad bugs and so those are the things that we're going to try to incorporate into that garden space yeah that makes i mean you're trying to really step backwards and let evolution do its thing without having to add any of those man-made Right. chemicals and, and process and you've been very successful with this you're you've already had several articles and you've i know the front of the observer is the here lately has had uh a, the uh smoke restaurant on the front page talking about the mm-hmm. garden in the back so this is a very popular thing that's happened that's why i wanted to have have you guys on the show and talk about it um kind of going back to some of the vegetables and because the, the, that's going to be the number one thing what what do you think is going to be popular for people to grow in their backyard that's they can easily have on a daily basis? I think talking to the customers and homeowners and finding out what their family likes Mm -hmm. and what is seasonal and getting feedback from them. And then also maybe suggesting, well, let's try one new thing each season and maybe you'll be surprised. Your kids might tell you that, hey, we like this stuff. Do you guys do, is it all vegetables? Do you do fruits? Oh, you can do strawberries. Like I said, you could do blackberry bushes. You could do grape vines if you wanted to. You could do all the fruits in your backyard. Now, if we were speaking to, because both of you are mothers, and so I know it's very important to always incorporate our children in this, but can you go to school and learn about any any of this gardening, n- new age kind of techniques that are happening lately? Not yet. Yeah? That's my next plan. All right. You, you what can. It, there what? are horticultural programs, but typically the typical college program is not necessarily based on organics. Okay. And um, there's a lot of land 
there's a lot of grants out there from chemical companies and so the college programs tend to go towards supporting that. You know, I just heard A&M recently, and I love my Aggies. I'm, I'm a rock chalk Jayhawk kind of guy. I, I moved to Texas, but I love my Aggies. And I was surprised to hear that Texas A&M actually pulled their organic farming from their repertoire and just said, no, we're not going to teach that anymore. And I thought that was interesting when you have an agricultural mechanical school that says we're not going to teach organic so there's a, been a big division can you can you kind of yeah. highlight on some of the things that's been happening with versus sustainability versus organics mm. <laughs> that's well, a big I, question. If, if you want to look at why people are doing anything follow the money yeah so from a healthy uh aspect you know when you grow organic versus eating a vegetable from the store what what's the difference why uh, wouldn't i just go to the store and, and buy my vegetables versus doing what you do that's that's actually a great question and i'm going to answer that in two parts okay um there there's two reasons to do that one um where did the fruit or vegetable you're buying come from what is the carbon footprint and the actual cost to our earth of that one fruit or vegetable that you have bought okay who knows where it came from now can you go to your local store? Yes, that's still a bit of a carbon footprint. Can you walk to your backyard without a carbon footprint? Yes, and you get a little exercise doing it. Secondly, when you buy something from the store, you can't necessarily verify the nutrient and mineral content of that. With your own homegrown organic food, you know it's safe. You know the mineral content is accurate, and it's tastier, too, because it's fresh out of your garden. I want to talk. We've got, we've got three minutes left. I wanted to talk about the go back to the worm wine because it's, it's an interesting concept. So you have your worms. First off, is there a specific type of species of worm that you use or is it just your can you go to the fishing store and mm. get a night crawler no, no. <laughs> um, those those worms that are at the fishing store are deep burrowing earthworms uh -huh. uh, the worms that i sell are red wigglers and okay. that's what i use they're the best composting worm they will actually eat their weight every day wow yes and so they are heavy feeders they eat so much fruit and vegetable waste and then they convert it into those nutrients and there's microbes in there and plant hormones so how does your wine come i mean what's the fluid mixture and what else are you what's i don't want to give away the secret <laughs> recipe or anything but uh, well we harvest rainwater uh -huh. and we like to use that not just to harvest that and save that from going through our alleys but also it doesn't have chlorine in it which might kill the beneficial microbes um, that is provided in that worm compost and so then we add um, molasses the dried molasses and that actually boosts the microbes in that and makes it healthier and more beneficial for your plants so have you done studies with your, uh, your fertilizer versus any other fertilizers that are out there? Well, I'll tell you what started the business are my fellow community gardeners. Uh -huh. I started using it on my plots, and within a month, people were saying, I don't know what you're using, but I want some of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you ever, and somebody back here, they wondered how you, do, how does it compare to orange juice? No, carrot juice. <laughs> Garrett, Garrett, carrot? Okay. Get, oh, carrot? Carrot, sure. carrot juice? Sure. Well, garret juice is wonderful. It's very, very similar. Um, one of the differences is I brew mine to order, uh -huh. and it is always kept oxygenated. So when you get it, you are guaranteed to have those live beneficial microbes, and you can go apply it right as a customer right to your yard or your garden, and it's going to give the most benefit. It's a living, living right. product at the moment. And, and we love Howard Garrett. He's one yeah. of our buddies. Yes, we and do. so we don't, we're not knocking Mr. Howard Garrett because he is a part of DFW Green Weavers, which is mm -hmm. how we all met and came together. Um, but this is a living product, and you brew it to order for mm -hmm. a specific customer on what types of vegetables they're growing or what? Um, you know what? We've applied it to our St. Augustine yards. Oh, um, wow. Everybody, after our late hard winter, had mm -hmm. brown patch in their St. Augustine yards. Yep. Warm wine and warm compost knocked those out. Wow. And Very so cool. yard application, garden, etc. Well, I've got just one minute left, and I wanted to give uh, both of you the opportunity to find out how we can stay in contact with you and find out more about this. So... Uh, Heather, we can find you on Facebook? Yes, um, just Google Texas Worm Ranch on Facebook, or you can go to my website.